Welcome back to Inorganic Chemistry. In our prior lectures, we learned about molecular orbital theory and how to use that to understand the bonding in diatomic molecules. In this lecture, we'll learn about polytonic molecules and symmetry adapted linear combination of atomic orbitals. And we'll look, uh, for example, at ammonia. So just as we did for the diatomics, the first step we're going to do is to determine the symmetry. So let's look at the point group for ammonia. We get the molecular geometry from VSEPR. So we get trigonal pyramidal for ammonia. And here's the primary rotation axis, C3, 3V point group. Uh, so we could look at the character table for C3V. And we know the S is going to have A1 symmetry because it's the most symmetric. We need to ask ourselves which S. So there's a nitrogen here that has a 2s valence orbital and there's three hydrogens here they all have 1s valence orbitals. Which s is most symmetric in this point group? It turns out that simple rules we were using to get our symmetry from the character table on those linear molecules when we get to these uh, more complex geometries only applies to the central atom because the coordinate axis coordinate system goes through the central atom. So the PZ orbital on nitrogen would have the same symmetry as the Z axis, whereas the PZ orbital on these hydrogens would not because they're not lined up with the coordination system. So for nitrogen, we can figure out the symmetry of the valence orbitals. Uh, we know this is A1, right? And then the Z transforms as A1, so PZ would also be A1. And X and Y are probably going to transform together as the E, doubly degenerate symmetry representation. Okay, so we can understand symmetry for the central atom. What about the symmetry for these atoms that are not along the coordination axes? We have a more complicated situation, and what we need to do is to take these three atomic orbitals, if we looked at the top view of this, the ligands would look like this, right? And our three 1s orbitals, and we're going to use the same approach that we've been using all along. We're going to use linear combinations of atomic orbitals, and we want to know the symmetry. In this case, we're going to create different combinations that will match the different symmetry possibilities within the point group. And this approach is called Symmetry Adapted Linear Combinations of Atomic Orbitals, or SALCs. How to draw SALCs. Your physical chemistry textbook goes through group theory and I also recommend the textbook Molecular Symmetry and Group Theory by Vincent that will go through and show you how to do this from from the bottom up taking the ligand orbitals atomic orbitals and determining all the reducible representations and then the irreducible representations for the different linear combinations. We're going to do a shortcut here. First we're going to say well what are our possible linear combinations? So for example with our three hydrogen 1 s orbitals in our ammonia, we could have a positive, positive, positive value for all three of those ligand orbitals. Another possibility is that we could have a positive, and a positive, and a negative on those one of those three atomic orbitals. You could have three of those types of possibilities. Another possibility would be one's positive and two are negative, but that, you see, is just the inverse of this symmetry situation. So there are only a few possible linear combinations. So we could figure these out re relatively quickly. Draw these combinations and do a symmetry analysis on them. So positive, 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 for example, positive, positive, positive. In the C3V point group, here's the C3 axis. If we rotate it along the C3, then it is symmetric, or the character of that rotation result would be plus one. If we don't do anything, of course, it's going to be symmetric with itself, plus one. If we do a rotation, it's symmetric with, it, with itself, plus one. If we do a mirror plane, vertical mirror plane, right here, that reflects to that. Uh, the positive reflects to positive, positive, positive. So it is symmetric with respect to a mirror plane, vertical mirror plane, that would work for all three possible mirror planes. So this particular linear, linear combination is going to transform as A1 because it has the same symmetry characters. Let's look at this possibility. So we have positive, positive, negative. What is the symmetry for that combination? E, it would be symmetric, plus one. C3 rotation, this positive rotates to a negative. This negative rotates to a positive, so so far it looks anti-symmetric, but 
this positive rotates to this positive. So that part is symmetric. So it's neither anti-symmetric nor symmetric. And that means we need to have a complementary combination. So let's see. That, that transforming together would result in a possible symmetric representation in this point group. How can we find, find that? Well, we know we have to transform together. The nodal plane will be perpendicular from one, one part of the pair to the other. Here's a nodal plane here in this drawing. Perpendicular to that would be a nodal plane here. So my, my complementary salc has a nodal plane going through here, which means that's negative, that's positive, and there is nothing there. See, in this point group, I have a set of salcs, positive, negative, positive, and negative, zero, positive, that will, can transform together in the point group. They have nodal planes that are perpendicular to each other. These transform together as the E representation. Then our final step for creating these salcs is to normalize. So it's a linear combination, so we got the sign of the linear combination, and then we also need to think about the coefficients on the linear combination. A1 wave function would be a linear combination, would be the same, right? C1, let's just call it coefficient one, multiply each atomic wave function to make total wave function linear combination here for the A1. Now for the E's, we have two wave functions. Let's call this one along the X. It has a different coefficient. It's called C2. And we're going to normalize by taking into account that in this pair, this atom contributes nothing to this salc. Therefore, this atom's atomic orbital must contribute even more to this salc. And we can show that by saying, well, two times V1 minus V2 minus V3 to make this salc here. And then we're going to have another coefficient on this salc. It would be C3 of V2 minus V3. And no contribution from V1 because twice as much was contributed in this salc here. That's how we can draw the salcs. This is how we can think about the coefficients for the salcs. And this came up just from doing linear combinations.